It's a level on the chart which once broken, it nullifies the trade. Identifying that before executing a trade is the first step. This means that whenever you're trying to take a trade, you're making sure that you know where your stop loss is going to be. You're already identifying your stop loss first. The first step before you take a trade is to, is to identify where you're going to place your stop loss. Um, for example, when candles are trending bullish, they make higher highs and they make higher lows. You know, best practice is to place stops below the lows of the candles, usually the 30 minute or the one hour, which we talked about. When executing a buy, candles have to respect the lows of the previous candles. You know, this is very important. Whenever you're taking buys, you know, you're always putting stops below the previous candles. You're always making sure the candles are respecting the lows of the previous candles, right? In the same way, um, oops, let's say we have a support down at the bottom. You know, you have a support and um, you have a candle that's closing bullish at support, okay? And then you have the next candle that's closing bullish at support. So let's say you had the first one. Now, when this is a one hour time frame, and if this is something that you could see that, okay, maybe this one hour time frame now basically means now there's a high probability for the next candles to move bullish, you might want to place your stop below this bullish candle, right? Because when you place a stop below the bullish candle, you're making sure that, okay, the next candle has to make a higher high and a higher low. So the next candle moves bullish, right? Now you're protecting your stop loss down, down there. Now you're expecting the candle after that to continue on making higher highs and higher lows. So when you're, when candles are making higher highs and higher lows, this is where you can say that, okay, maybe I want to move my stop down over here, right? Or now I want to move my, I'm going to trail my stop down over here because now I expect the next candles to continue on making higher highs and higher lows, right? So now when we move on, next one, now once the lows are broken, that's where you say that, okay, maybe now I made a good decision. Because once you're trailing your stops below the lows of the candles, you're expecting candles to make higher highs and higher lows. But once the previous low is broken, now you're out of the trade. You know, now this basically means that, okay, maybe now price is going to start reversing. So risk management in this sense is really, really, really important. You know, whenever you go in profits, you're moving your stops below the lows of the candles if you're taking buys. You know, sometimes, you know, what guys do is they say, okay, well, if, um, let's say, price is going to come down and break the low of the previous candle, what I want to do is I might want to close off percentage position, which we're going to talk about, like, you know, later on in the slides. So what we have here, when the candle is breaking the low, um, someone asked, when the low is broken, is it means the body or the wick? It means the wick, because, because this is the candle, this is the high of the candle, and this is the low of the candle, right? So... It basically means the wick. Um, in the same aspect, when candles are trending bearish, they will make lower lows and lower highs. Um, what's this? I'm in, but my screen is black. Zoom is messed. I can hear you, just can't see. Okay, um, maybe try updating the zoom, maybe. Okay, that was basically Ted. Okay, um, so, so whenever... The candles are moving bearish, they will make lower highs and lower lows, right? So this basically means it's best practice is to place stops above the highs of the candles. Um, above the highs of the candles, usually 30 minute or the one hour. When executing a sell, candles have to respect the highs of the previous candles. You know, so when we look at an example here, let's say you have a resistance up over here and you have a candle that's moving bullish. At resistance so this is when we don't want to take a sell because candles are bullish right now so what we want to do is we want to wait for a bearish candle to form once you have a bearish candle forming now you can say that okay now there's a higher chance if this is a one hour chart or let's say if this is a 30 minute chart at this point you can say that okay maybe now there's a higher chance for the next candle to continue making lower highs and lower lows and continue moving bearish. So at this point, you might want to say that, okay, maybe I want to put my stop loss above the previous candle, expecting the next candle to continue moving bearish. 
right? So let's say the next candle now starts moving bearish. So what someone might do is someone might say, okay, maybe now I'm in profits. I might want to secure profits and move my stop below the high, no, above the high of the previous candle, you know, and as price starts moving, now you want to further trail your stop above the high of the previous candle. Oh, we had an audio problem. <laughs> okay, perfect. So now, since you're trailing your stops, now when candles are moving bearish, you're, you're seeing candles are making lower highs and lower lows, right? Now, for this for, for the downtrend to be neglected, you want candles to break the highs of the previous candle. So let's say, for example, if the next candle continues moving bearish and now you're, even though you're, um, you're trailing your stop down to the highs of the previous ones, and once you have a candle that breaks the high of the previous candle, now you're like, okay, maybe there's going to be a change in trend. You know, if you're looking at the one hour time frame, if you're looking at the 30 minute time frame, then if you're seeing candles are making lower highs and lower lows. But if that one candle breaks the high of the previous candle, that might be a cause of concern that, OK, now you might say that, OK, maybe it's maybe, you know, it might stop me out. Maybe because if this is a 30 minute time frame, we might see that the next candle may start moving bullish. Right, so it's very important. So the basic concept here for risk management 2.0 is like looking to see how candles are making lower highs and lower lows, or how candles are making higher highs and higher lows in uptrends, so that you're trailing your stops below the candles. You know, it's very important. Some people, you know, what they do is um, you'll take a buy. Let's say you'll take a buy down over here at this wick, and you're going to keep your stop down over here. Now price moves into profits. Price moves into profits, and you haven't moved your stop. When you don't move your stop loss, what might happen is, is that the next candle might come down and you haven't moved your stop, it might continue down and stop you out in a loss. You know, So this is why risk is really important. You're continuously moving your stop below the lows of the candles in uptrends and you're continuously moving your stop um, above the highs in downtrends. You know, because if you get that one candle that starts moving bullish, you want to be stopped out in profits, you know, which is why your stop is always going to be um, at this point right over here. Um, I hope my pace is uh, okay. You know, there's, my pace is not too fast, not too slow. It's pretty good. Audio is clear. Okay, perfect. Um, all right, I want to see if Ted is here, if Ted can raise his hand. We will. Um, do you recommend beginners to dabble in that trade management? Yes. Ooh. I